Let's see what's going on in the futures market and then get analysis with Todd Horowitz at Bubba Trading. Right now in the corn market, we've been about uh, uh, in that range, anywhere from a penny and a half to two and a half cents lower. Two and a half lower now on the May. The July down one and three quarters just changed on us here. And the December down two and a quarter at 347 and a half. What about the soybeans today? They're lower too. May down six. July down five and a half, 856 and three quarters. And November down five and three quarters. Chicago wheat for July down five and a half, 550. In the Kansas City wheat market, July down 10 and a quarter at 490 and a half. Minneapolis wheat for July down five and a quarter cents at 533 and a quarter. Todd Horowitz is here with us. Todd, it's good to talk to you again today. Uh, I was reading some of your comments earlier, and you were talking about um, how not to chase these markets, uh, just kind of uh, uh, sit on the sidelines here and watch a little bit. Well, look what we've done over here in the corn market. Uh, if if we're, you were trying to chase this market, well, you did sure had to chase it quite a bit lower. So what's your thoughts here today on the grains? Well, John, I think that, again, I think they're just kind of coiling and, and getting ready to explode. Again, it'll it, we, it could be tomorrow. It could be a week from tomorrow. We can't answer when, but it certainly feels like they found the lower end of this range, and there doesn't seem to be too much more room to go down. Now, obviously, anything can happen, but, <clears throat> excuse me, for my money, I think that, that there's a much greater chance that there's a much bigger rally than the amount of downside risk. But I think it's always prudent to wait to get in until the markets start to give you, you know, some momentum in your direction. Because again, you don't want to swim against the trend or against the, 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 the current. And I think that if you're getting in here, the current is still lower because it's, there's nothing really going on. And there's still some sellers out there that continue to pressure and push because of the lack of volume and the lack of real liquidity. So to me, I'd wait to start to see some positive movement. I'd rather pay two cents more than have to wait and just make a decision that they go four cents lower. For every movement, though, Todd, there is, uh, for every challenge, there is an opportunity, and there's plenty of opportunities in these markets. I want to shift gears here and talk to you about crude oil. Now that we have this potential understanding, if I can use that term, maybe it's an agreement. Uh, crude oil is still a little <laughs> bit here on the lower side here. Um, is it going to take a while to be able to reverse direction in this market? Well, again, if you go back and look, John, out at, you know, again, we're, you're watching May, which is whatever you watch is the front month. But if you look into the future, oil is much higher into the future. July oil is about five bucks over May already. So, again, they're already accounting for a deal. You know, what, what's happening here in the front months is does it take place? How long does it take? And does it fall through? So there's still pressure on May and some on June. But as you get farther out, the pressure eases and the markets are higher. So they're telling you through that contango formation that they're most likely going to go higher and there, there will be a deal and we will see a bigger demand, less supply, which is obviously what the market would love to see here. You know, the VIX keeps winding down or backing off here a little bit. Uh, are we starting to see some of that over there in the outside markets as well, uh, where they're starting to find a little bit more firm ground? Well, yeah, again, but again, I, th I think this is more of an artificial pump up move. I mean, there's a lot of excitement out there. C couple that with the lack of places to go with your money and the free stimulus coming in. You know, again, this will run itself through these markets. And the question will come. We've already seen earnings come out this morning with J.P. Morgan, which were a dramatic miss. There's going to be a lot of misses. How are they going to handle all this bad news that is coming? They can't possibly have priced it in already or could they? That's always the question to me. We're going to still te make a retest of the lows, and this is more of a an illiquid rally that you've got people chasing the markets with the old fear of missing out. That's and right. you've you've said that several times about not much liquidity in any of these markets. Todd, thank you very much. We'll talk to you again soon, and we'll uh, you, be sir. on the other side of this break with a check of the livestock markets, the new cutouts, and we'll check in with Chris Summers next here on the Market Day Report.